fundamental challenge. So I've just, I've just set the table for us, okay? So now we have to go to the text to confirm, okay? It's a big table. It's a big, it's a big goal. Number one, biggest fundamental issue, major challenge. This is from across the board, okay? Barry, and so when I say Barry, this is just Hebrew covenant for those who are new. Hebrew covenant does not appear in Genesis 1 to 3. In fact, it does not occur until Genesis 6.18. Therefore, we should not refer to any relationship between God and man as a covenant. Wow, that, that's strong. Very malakas. And it's true. Covenant, covenant is not in Genesis 1 and 2. So just thinking from our, those that attended our introductory issues, what is the fundamental flaw with this statement that if Barith is not present, it can't, it can't, we can't see it there. What's the fundamental flaw from our introductory issues when we define covenant? What's the fundamental flaw there, anybody? What should we be looking for? The components of the covenant. Ah! Who said that? Who said that? Clay, you get the gold star. I need, I need like a, a buzzer. Excellent. We're looking for components. Hey, I'll use it. I'll use a positive analogy. So I come back down the street and my wife's, my wife says, where were you? And I said, Oh, I was, I was down the street. The neighbors have a ball and they're shooting around, right? Do, does everyone know that the term shooting around, they have a ball and they're shooting around. What am I referring to? The, the neighbors are, are, are down the street. They have a ball and they're shooting around on the, on the court. What am I referring to? Mel, go ahead. Basketball. 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 I didn't say basketball. Oh, well, Tim, you weren't referring to basketball because you didn't say it. It's like, no, I was like, this is like, I could just say like, hey, what are the neighbor kids doing? They're, they're, they're shooting around at the court. Oh, they're playing basketball. Do you see what I'm saying? So just because I don't use the word doesn't mean that the concept isn't there, okay? I think in a more general sense, when we talk about hermeneutics, our, our brothers would always push on the explicit, uh, denying the, the, the concept. It might not be explicitly said there, but the concept is clear. Yes. And concept communicates in the same way as the explicit, explicit words communicate as well. So I, I think it, it also goes back to, to hermeneutics and we, we cannot deny that concepts are there mm. um, and not just explicit words. No, that's, that is so good, Anting. Thanks for that clarification. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so the, the concept, and this, this concerns hermeneutics, absolutely. Because really it's, it's a very wooden reductionistic. Oh, if the, if the word isn't used, we can't infer. And that just is, it's too simplistic. And we don't, we're not even consistent in our own, in our, in our own common, common time as well. So really good. So we want to look for the concept and components. These are most important. Now, of course, the having the word is even a better thing, right? So it's not bad, but this is this here is most fundamental. Excellent. Foundational passages and reasons for accepting the covenant of works. Okay, let's get let's get into the text. So we're we're looking now at the fundamental passages, reasons for accepting the covenant of works. So turn your your the first passage we're going to look at is Genesis six eighteen. Okay, turn your Bibles to Genesis six eighteen. So this is the first explicit. Reference now. At first, you're going to say it's not explicit, but I think by the time we're done, you, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Okay, I'll just read this really quick, and then we'll just highlight some things. We won't we won't spend a lot of time because we actually have to go to um, four passages. Okay, <clears throat> here's the first passage: For behold, I will I will bring a flood waters upon the earth and destroy all life which is in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything on earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you. And you shall come into the ark and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. And everything that everything of all flesh, you will bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you, male and female. And then Noah says he does all that the Lord commands him. Okay. So, okay. So coming up here. So just notice several things first. Okay. So number one, we see, we see first here, there is this, if we're focusing here, there's this action here. And there is this, this is an action. 
purpose? The purpose of bringing the floodwaters is to destroy all, all of flesh, okay? And the object here is, this is the object, um, person and thing. And then look at the result here. So this is, if you can imagine here, this is the, this is the result. Everything on earth will die, okay? And actually, this is really a, a, a prophecy. This is a prophecy, and this is the result. Okay, the reason why it's a prophecy is, number one, the actor is God, and this is an action, future tense. So whenever you have the actor is God, and there's a future action, you can say it's a prophecy, okay? So there's a prophecy that's going on here. So this here, we can say comprehensively, this is an idea of judgment, right? This is judgment because this is, this is a, a punishment. Is everyone tracking with what I'm saying here? So we have judgment. This is the punishment. So if, if a judgment is going on and punishment is going on, then obviously what's, what's occurring here is there is the, the concept of covenant is present and and specifically with the reference to death oh can what's you... the difference between judgment and punishment excellent question judgment is the declaration of the judge judgment is the declaration or the assessment and then the and the declaration guilty and then punishment is actually the meeting out of the judgment. Does that make sense? So the, the, the entire act of judgment is the judge saying, you're guilty, you've been breaking my laws. And now the punishment, I declare that the punishment will be death. And then he actually brings it about. But this, this idea of this curse here, this, this is coming back to, to Adam's, Adam's curse. God is going, whereas God withheld his hand, right? God withheld his hand from immediate death. Now it's going to bring about. So there's already implications of Adam being present. Now, this is the key, okay? So look at this here. So then this is a, this is a adversative relationship here. But I will establish my covenant with you. And notice this here now. So I will establish, this is the action. And this is actually, again, another prophecy. And then the object is the covenant. And then the, the person is, is Noah. Now, what's super important to notice here is this, this word. We're going to do a word study on this word here, okay? So let's go, let's go look to our, our Bibles, our text here. So Genesis uh, 6.18. So looking at this word here, notice here, this word is is the the Hebrew word kum, kum, which means to stand up, remain, or establish standing. Okay, this is so actually, and then this here is barith, barith. Okay, so kum barith. All right. Now, what's really important to notice here is when you have, when you have these two words used in one context. This ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time is referring to the existence of an earlier covenant. So it's like transitionary. And you see that because here, when you look at the meaning here, it's establish or remain. So let's, let's look this word up. I'm going to look this word up in the dictionary here. So we can see this, this look up over here. And so if I blow this up here, whom to abide, to accomplish, to confirm, to continue, to endure. So this idea of continuing, okay? So my covenant, my covenant will be, will will continue with you, okay? Now, coming back here. So then, what's going on here is that there is the implication being is that there is some, there is some preceding covenant. Myers will say this is referring to the covenant of grace in Genesis 3.15. So 
the promise was made with Eve and, and God says, I'm going to, the promise is now going to go through you, Noah. And, and so the, the parallel analogy example of this is when the covenant is transferred from Abraham to Isaac, not Ishmael, right? Not Ishmael and then to Jacob. Does everyone see that? So then when, the, when, the, when Isaac comes, God says, I will establish my covenant with him. And then when Jacob comes, I will establish my covenant with him. So the implication is this word is, is connecting back. So Myers will say that it's coming back to Genesis 3.15. And I was unsure about that. I'm really becoming a lot stronger in that. Okay. So, so even though probably the focus of this passage is Genesis 3.15, and not Adam's covenant, I, I feel as if it's like a false dichotomy because later you're going to see it in, in the mandate of, of Noah. You're going to see so much of, so let's just read the mandate of Noah. It, you're going to see this. So if we, if we read the mandate of Noah, it's almost parallel to Adam. Look at the mandate to Noah. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast. So it's almost parallel. It's almost parallel, okay? But there's new information. But the important thing coming back here is that Adam's covenant as an abrogated. M marriage isn't done away with. Dominion isn't done away with. Rest and work isn't done away with, okay? So, so I really think here both covenants are probably in view, and for sure the accent is here. The, the, the confirming is with so this Genesis 3.15, this is the, the promise to Eve. And if that's the case, then in Eve already, the covenant of grace is there. As soon as you recognize, as soon as you recognize this, the parallel, the parallel is this. So then you have Noah and, and this is coming back up to Eve. Okay. So, th so there is the promise, the promise of seed, right? The promise of seed. Is everyone tracking there with me? Regardless of whether you, because I think the, the progressive covenantalism, the progressive confidentialism um, will say it goes back to Adam. Okay. And I've gone back and forth. Regardless of whether you see going back to 315 or back to Adam, the whole point being is that covenant is already there. Does everyone see that? It's already there. So you can't say, oh, the word isn't mentioned, so it can't be there. It's like, no, it's already there. It's there, okay? Steve, yeah. uh, just a yeah. grammatical uh, analysis. So God is saying here, I will establish a covenant with you, but emphasizing on establish, meaning I'll continue. Yeah. Um, and it brings us back. Yes, I understand it. It brings us back to the past. Yeah. And I could probably refer to Genesis 3.15 mm -hmm. or all the way to Genesis yeah. chapter 2, uh, verse 16 to 17. But, mm -hmm. but on first reading, uh, you would be looking at the covenant that God would still be establishing with, with Noah, which is the universal covenant. So... <clears throat> So what are you saying is that the covenant of Noah with Noah is standing on Genesis 3.15 or even Genesis 2.16 to 17? So, so, yeah, so just to be clear, okay, so now we're going to in investigate Noah later. So, so the, the primary purpose here is only to say covenant must be in, in existence. When, you, when, when you're using uh, this terminology establish my covenant it just supports a preceding existent covenant whatever you seek adam or 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 eve covenant of grace doesn't matter the point is just we're we're responding to the to the claim the word isn't mentioned it can't be present that's the primary purpose so that's the first thing i want to say and then the second thing is what does it refer to does it refer to, to eve or to adam and i've gone back and forth some people will say it's eve some people will say it's adam and, and I really think it, it's probably a both and because we had a long conversation about, about I guess I'll just diagram it out here. So, so we, Tuesday night, I'm actually going to post that diagram because we actually had this long discussion here. So you, if you have Adam, if you have Adam's covenant, 
there is general and specific. Okay. So this, this covenant, so if we can, so if we can imagine here, this is time. Okay. So time is going this direction. It's not going the opposite direction. I, uh, maybe it's a bad way to do it. You have general and specific. This ends, right? You can't, the specific probation is, it's, a, it's failed. It's over. Tapos not, right? But you still have obviously the, the effect, which is the curse. Okay. The curse. But then all the general continues on, right? That's still binding. It's still, so, th so what I'm saying is it's not abrogated. Abrogated, no. Okay. So then even with the covenant of grace and maybe, and maybe, I mean, we're going so deep here. This is beyond the scope of the class. Okay. We're beyond the scope of the class. Fair enough. But even, so even with the covenant of, of, of grace, there's, there's aspects going on through there. And then, and then you have Eve and then you have Noah. Okay. And then of course, each one is giving new information. Okay. And so we talked about before, like, it's almost as if there's an aspect where the whole it's, it's going through all of them. And so this is why, so just to, to bring in other positions on covenant uh, beyond the scope of the class. Okay. Um, and that's why like Robertson will see a covenant of life and then of grace. Um, Eve, Noah, and this is all one. Do you see that now? Do, 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 do you see what I'm saying? Uh, ending. And so you kind of at this got juncture, it, it. yeah, at this juncture, you're kind of like, wow, now I see the debate. <laughs> My goodness. So, you know, I've gone back and forth. I, I, I do think that we, we want to see. So if we can, I, I, this also comes back to, God's covenant is so multifaceted, it's so deep that I do think there's multiple perspectives going on here. So I, I think there is the covenant of works fundamental uh, component, but there is also those other mandates that traverse through because, and, and, and maybe let's go back to, the, to what Westminster Confession 7.1 says, and maybe this is really helpful. 7.1, we, we read this a while ago, it says... The distance between God and creature is so great, although reasonable creatures do owe obedience to him as their creator, yet they could not have of any fruition of him as their blessedness and reward. But some voluntary condescension on God's part, which he has been pleased to express by way of covenant. And so there is multiple covenants. There is multiple features, but there is this one trajectory of one covenant that's going through, if that, if, if that makes sense. We, we, we do want to differentiate between the covenant of works and the covenant of grapes, but there is another perspective where it's just God is working through one. They're not opposing each other is what I'm trying to get at. They're not opposing each other. So um, otherwise you have all these different convoluted, like what's going, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's just convoluted and confusing. I, I, I so I think there's multiple fat features and facets, but we, so, so we can see works verse grace that's one perspective and that that maybe that's the fundamental perspective but there is also this this other trajectory of just covenant is everyone tracking there am i making sense ask a follow-up question if i'm not making sense if i'm confusing please ask a follow-up question is, is that making sense yes Steve. okay good i hope it's making sense and really it this came to me when we were discussing class on tuesday and i, I was like oh my goodness now I see why there's such a debate. I really could see that. I could see it before. And so there's really this um, perspective. There's really this multiple perspective going on. Excellent. Okay.